Hey everyone, welcome back to Your Six Covered, and tonight you will find out which revolver is All the right. king. Oh, hey. We're we fine. got the, uh, we have the, <laughs> shut up over there. <laughs> we got <laughs> the Colt <laughs> versus the Smith & Wesson. We got two individuals with a great collection. We got, uh, oh, we got some trigger, we'll do some trigger testing, see which one's the best. These two guys, I have no fight in this game, I'm not a wheel gun guy. But you guys tonight will know which one will win. So let's get started. We have the crazy Scotsman. Go ahead and uh, say hi, and then we'll get into showing all the great guns off, and then and then we'll have a special guest, WTF SoCal. Well, what's up, motherfuckers? <laughs> Smith and Wesson, baby. Smith and Wesson, all the way. All right, so in that corner, we have the Scotsman, the crazy Scotsman with the Smith & Wesson. And in the other corner, Mr. WTF SoCal. So let's see what's going on here. I'll tell you what, either way you go, you're probably a winner. Uh, both guns are probably extremely awesome. Uh, would love to have either one. But uh, WTF SoCal's still looking for some magic stuff, so... We got, uh, and here he is, ladies and gentlemen, WTF SoCal. Hi. <laughs> I, got the, I got them all worked up for you. Ruger oh, is those. We apologize for delay. SoCal was taking his time getting prepped. You know, he, he's one of those Californian guys. He's got to take his time and. Pretty himself up, put his makeup on, all that good shit. Yeah, it's a work of art, but somebody's got to do it. All right, and then when you guys decide which one's better here between the uh, Ruger and the Colt, all right, have, so we still have the uh, Ruger to talk about. Yeah, I had a brain fart. Um, I sold many of my Colt revolvers when I was. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. I only have a couple left. So I, one, well, I should say two. I have two identical Colt Pythons. Here's, um, here's one of them. Uh, it's actually a, uh, it's a, it's a regular production gun. <laughs> uh, not perfection, not mass produced, but yet mass produced. Anyway, um, this actually was in, I wish I could remember the name of the guy. There's some, there was some guy that did, uh, my dad was like big into like Western shit in the fifties and sixties. And so this guy, my dad bought two Colt pythons and had this guy, um, engrave them. And they're both literally identical. It's got like this cool American Eagle uh, on one side of the gun. All the uh, kind of lettering and uh, accents are in uh, gold leaf. You can see Colt Python. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's a cool gun. Uh, and the other one's just like it. I think, I don't know which one this is. Let me see. Where's the serial number? Okay, so this is the six. This is a 1968 Colt Python. The other one I have is a 71. And <coughs> so, this is this is basically um, for what I believe is uh, Scotsman's 19 44 Magnum. And this is early. I want to say early 80s. It might be late 70s. I'm not sure. So that would but be a 29, not a 19. Uh, if it's a 19, it's a 357. All right. Well, I got one of those. Hang on a second. I thought a 19 was a, uh, I thought you were talking about big bore. Big, hey, big bore, 44, 29. Okay. So this is a 29. I'm sorry. This is big bore. Big bore. <laughs> like you, you're a big fucking bore. <laughs> hey, man. Carry a big board. Go the fuck home. <laughs> okay. Hold on. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me let me let me grab my carry gun. Hold on. Carry big board. Go the fuck home. 
Yes. All yes, right. Yes. First off, let's do a price comparison, not the fancy one with all the shit. Did yeah. Again, I can't. I can't do a price comparison because all these were handed down to me after my father passed away. Uh, I just well, kind Scott, of inherited these, and yeah. Scotty will know the prices. So if you take the same gun, Colt, and the same gun, Winchester or Smith and Wesson, I mean, price differences. Is it pretty close? They're, they're fairly close. So depending on whether or not it's original, hasn't been re-blued, um, original grips, box, papers, those all make a difference. So, for example, um, like my 4-inch Smith, my 29-2, um, this guy is all original, original grips. If I didn't have original grips, take four hundred dollars off the price. Wow! Because you're you're paying for those grips. Um, I was lucky enough to find it with the original grips, and I was lucky enough to uh, find someone that could make me a holster, and I'll do a review on that here pretty soon because this bad boy gets carried every day. Um, but that's coming up. Yeah. Uh, do they change the grips because they don't work very well or they crack and you need to replace them after so long or what? No, back in the early sixties and seventies, everyone went to pack Meyer grips. Yeah. And that particular style for whatever reason is that's what they did. Um, like my, this one here, my, my 29 stainless, uh, these the are not original for the gun. I had to purchase these grips, which are from their same year. This is a 1979 gun, and these grips are from the exact same year, but they're not original to the firearm. Okay, that's interesting you say that because I didn't I didn't realize that. And uh, this one uh, 19 or 29, whatever one it is, it does Pac have Meyer. the uh, the Packmeyer grips, the kind of ergonomic. Dirty yeah, they, they switched them out to Packmeyer grips all the time, which is unfortunate because, on average, if you're trying to buy one, you're about two to four hundred dollars for grips. Yeah, well, I'm not too sweating it. I'm not ever getting rid of these unless but I die, and then they'll go, go to somebody. To it, I'm though, sure. If they both came in the same box, they both came in everything. Are what are we looking at? Eleven hundred bucks. Anywhere, if, if, if it comes in the original box with papers, original grips, you're looking anywhere from about eighteen to twenty-five hundred dollars. Okay, now now who has the better bluing process? You think between the two, SoCal's looking at two different. You're looking at cold. Well, they're, they're 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 both different bluing processes, so you can't really compare the bluing processes and that aspect of it. It's cold all day. You, you, you okay. really can't. Here's what I want to do is I want to try to break down every part of it and see at the end of the, the show which which way these guys might want to buy just due to the fact of what you, you're saying. I, I honestly, uh, not having really honestly, I, I, I'm just playing the trigger game here, but honestly, the, uh, the Smith & Wesson takes the blue. And as far as uh, the way I think it look, should look, if you're going to do a blue, Smith & Wesson does blue well. Um, unfortunately, the the, uh, the the Python that I have here, um, it does have the original blue, but um, it's just not... <clears throat> it's, it's more it's of a park... Blue. It's, it's more of a park, it's more of a park rise blue versus a Smith, which is an actual blue. Yeah, this look... If you look at this... Like I have white LED lighting, but I think in your screens you kind of get like almost like a, a a powder puff blue reflection from that white light off of that. Where if I show you the bottom of this uh, Python barrel, it's it's uh, not that powder puff color. It's uh, there's less reflected light. Um, it's just not as pretty. It's not as shiny, really. The Smith, the Smith bluing is way mirror-like finish. It's, it's pretty sexy. It, Smith does a phenomenal job. Or at least they did back in the day. They did a phenomenal job. Um, my daily carry gun that I take to work is my 357, 
Uh, this one is from 1969, and you guys can see this, and the blue one on this is freaking phenomenal. Um, and this thing is in mint condition. So <clears throat> they do a, they do a phenomenal job on that. Their trigger jobs are phenomenal. I have yet to find a Smith and Wesson from the early '60s, early '70s, uh, where they did a shitty job. Yeah, they both look good. How about sights? If you're to take sights, any does one company have a better sight than the other one? Well, now you're now you're talking a whole different game because that's pretty uh, personal. That's honestly so, pretty personal. I mean, for example, on the stainless steel here, you have your black rear sights and your front red post sight. And the red post sight was very popular back then for a lot of Smith and Wessons, and even on the old Colts. So, I mean, majority of them were were very similar. And that's windage and elevation. Yep, yeah. windage and elevation. Yeah. So here's the the rear side on the Colt. I don't know if you guys can even pick that up. I can't. Yeah, see go me. down a little. So you it's got a that. black front sight. Yeah. So it's just, but if you look at the actual geometry of the sight, uh, there's like a little U shape there and uh, whatnot. Oh yeah. yeah. So, uh, if you look at the Smith sight, now this is the oldest Smith I've got, I think, and I'm going to point it right at myself. Awesome. Uh, that's pull it down a it's little got, bit. Um, it, it's got the U. Know. It to, to me, it's also got that Glock thing in the in the back. <laughs> I don't know if you could tell from the uh, picture, but it's got that uh, kind of painted little like horseshoe shape yeah all right um, call it a tie and then the front sight's got that like uh scotsman was saying that uh kind of like uh fluorescent orange thing going on more of the point <clears throat> how about some trigger testing what do you think yeah it's i was gonna save that for the end but oh uh, well fuck dude do it you want to drag this out until infidian or I was thinking at least midnight. <laughs> it's already Great. fucking midnight, fucker. Where the fuck are you at? Fucking bitch I'm ass the, California. I'm on the left coast. I'm on the left coast today. Well, fuck. I ain't going for two more fucking hours, dude. I gotta go to bed. I'm I gotta go to kidding. work. Settle down. Put your oh, tampon dude. back in and shut yeah. the fuck up. Okay, so if we're talking about single action, I think this is the nicer of the two guns that I have. Uh as far as these two 44 magnums that Scotty is so proud of. Um, I got to get back on the right chat. I'm watching us like five seconds ago. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> so in double action, and I'm going to just for safety, Sally's sake, I'm going to show you that it's, the gun is not loaded. Um, I, I will not show you shit for safety, Sally's. Um, well, this is I'm point, I'll be pointing this thing in my face, so I just don't want to. Yeah, I, I ain't pointing on my fucking face. I ain't now, are you going to put a snap cap in that or something? Or? No. Nah. Oh, it's a, that shit. a barb trigger. I'm not really – or a hammer. Okay. I was going to mess up your guns. The, uh, the, the take up on this is – it's smooth and very reactive, but well, I don't know. It's it's there's nothing wrong with that trigger right there. Uh, the, let's just measure the single action it, pull because it I know it's, it's sick. It's stupid sick. Now you're doing which one right now? Okay, so this the is Smith, Smith and Wesson, Wesson model uh, twenty nine, and this is single action pull. We are cleared out for zero, yep. and I'm going to guess it's about a pound and a half, if that. Well, maybe not. All right, so three and a, three and a half pounds, which I don't – I want to do that again because I'm not buying that. 
I'm not either. <clears throat> I'm not buying that shit either, dude. That's fucked up. Yeah. Let's He's do it again. This. There right. we go. That's two. No, that was three. Three one. Three pound one ounce. Let me do the other. Uh... We'll do one more, and then it's then you have right. an average. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Like I said, I'm I'm on Polk's team for this one. Uh, I have to reset this. No, I'll, I'll type the average in there so we have it. All right, that was three point oh nine. So three pounds, oh nine ounces. Is that the average? Uh, and the average is no. I <laughs> I have to clear this. I have averages from uh, back earlier today all right let me do three more really quick sorry to fucking make this a train wreck <laughs> it wouldn't be it's california right. it's gonna be a fucking so, train wreck 358 358 otter mountain man three four Forty. three and three, three, five. Okay, so that's a good. What's the average? I'll put it in here. Average weight was uh, three point or three pounds four point five ounces, which uh, honestly, I didn't think it was that great because uh, you know something you don't get with revolvers that you do with all semi-automatic handguns. There's no, there's no wall. There's nothing. As soon as you pull that trigger just enough, you don't even feel anything. It just goes off. It's, it just happens. There's no like click. There's no creep. There's nothing. It just boom. So let's do the Colt. Yeah, let's do the Colt. So here's the, the Colt. And I wish you could feel this because <laughs> it's so different. Uh, the take up on this trigger is literally half as much, I would guess, maybe two thirds max. And it gets really stiff about there and then it just lets go. And the, the trigger is dumb. All right. So let's do the, do the Colt. I've never done this before. So maybe Scotsman's going to win this. Let me clear this and go ready. So here's the Colt. Two, two nine eight. Two nine eight. All right, two more. You're getting your ass kicked right now, Scotty. Two thirteen seven. Ooh, that one's bringing it down. Yeah, bringing it on down. WNC preppers in the house. <laughs> And back down again, two, three, three. All right, give me an average. Average is two, eight, nine. Ooh. Okay, so. Python wins. <laughs> should, we do, should we do the double action pull? Let's do the double action pull. So we'll start with Smith first. And I don't even know if this thing will read that high. I don't know what the highest uh, pull weight on this thing is. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know if it's even 10 pounds, but so here we go. <laughs> 10 pounds, 2.8 ounces. And uh, we'll do one more just for the sake of fucking fuck it. For the sake of fucking fuck it. Fucking fuck it. <laughs> and 10 pounds, 7.5 ounces. And then... Uh, the snake gun. <laughs> okay, the the average was uh, ten point five two, so we're gonna go clear that and ready. Pull Python. Nine four zero. Oops, I cleared it. Fuck. So there's not gonna be an average. 
eight twelve point two. So that was about a couple pounds lighter. That was a pound lighter. Yeah. So I don't. Does that really mean anything? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, 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 I'm not I, I'm not like SoCal. I don't have that kind of money to spend on some fancy ass fucking rig that tells me what the poundage is. I will just tell it's you like fifty bucks, dude. You could afford it. I will just tell you right now. <laughs> butter, baby, butter. Fucking butter. Hold on. And, well, let, and, let me show you. I will me, say. Let I me will show say. you that one more time. No, let me show you this. Let, let me show you that one more time. <laughs> you can't even see my finger. It's like fucking. I, I, I barely even have my thumb on this. Butter, baby. Butter. Butter. Colt makes better butter than Smith does. <laughs> <laughs> Smith. Colt has got the recipe for butter down better. He's got the best best butter. I don't, I don't know about that. I will. Uh, I will can't believe it's this, not butter. I will put up <laughs> this bad boy right here with your fucking Colt all day long. And uh, yes, this is the original box. Look at SoCal looking for his box. And uh, yes, that is a beautiful is, box. This this gun right here is probably the first video I ever made on YouTube. And uh, no, I'm not going to show you it's empty because I really don't give a flying fuck whether you care or not. So fuck you, snowflakes. Um, this bad boy right here is a Model 29-2. Everything is original. It's a six-inch blue. Original grips. Now, what, this is from 1969. Now, what handle does that have on it? Tell us a little bit about the J handle and all that bullshit. This is an N frame. M is in Mary frame? Nancy. November. Oh, N is in Nancy frame. See, I don't know much about this. <laughs> Nancy, <thing>. like snowflake. <laughs> like snowflake, Nancy. Just, just for the fucking snowflakes, yes. This is a Nancy frame. And there's nothing nasty about this fucking caliber, because I tell you what, you want to get fucking nasty? Let's get fucking nasty, motherfucker. Hey, I have an idea. Okay, so let me grab. I don't have a 44 in uh, stainless, but I have a 357. So I wonder if the 357 is any better than the blue guns. So let me let me grab one of those. Let's check Hang that out. And while you're doing that, Scotty, why don't you tell us about? How important it is when you buy something like this to buy it with all the paperwork in the box and all that, and how much more it's worth, and that kind of stuff. Well, I mean, so I've been doing this for a long time, and I got started in collecting Smiths, for example, about six years ago. And I was lucky enough to meet some people that were nice enough to kind of give me the, the basics of it and kind of what to look for. And then I got hooked on Dirty Harry and all that shit and kind of went from there. And basically what you want to look for is grab you, grab you a Smith & Wesson book. It'll cost you 30, 35 bucks. And do your research. Research, research, research. Um, I cannot tell you how much just looking through that book will teach you. I literally have taught people over the years just from reading that book alone that thought they knew what Smith & Wesson was by reading that book and having the knowledge to myself and going back and saying, whoa, whoa, whoa no, you're wrong, dude. Like, take a look at this. Like, I'm telling you right now, just trust me on this. I know what I'm talking about. And... Little stuff like that makes a big difference. Uh, grips, having original grips. How can you tell if it's an original to the gun? So, for example, these are not original to this firearm. And they're close, but they're not all the way there. Now, one of the big tells you can tell, if you look right here on the far side, there's a gap. If it was original to the gun, there wouldn't be a single gap in this whatsoever. And I'll try and get this closer so you can see it in the camera. But there's a small gap. And that tells you right there it's not original. 
Now, if you look at the far side, the far side is flush. So you'd almost think it is original. So you, you got to be really, really careful. Um, there's just small things. Now, if you ever go to buy a Smith or a Colt, no matter what it is, in a revolver, and trust me, Colts are nice too. Fuck you, SoCal. Uh, Colts are nice as well. Take the grips off. No matter what you do, take the grips off. Take and them the off? Have, if the person refuses to take those grips off, don't buy the gun. And the reason I tell you that is because nine times out of ten, this is going to be perfect all the way through. But underneath here, there'll be rust, pitting, everything you can fucking think of underneath the grips. Oh, just from capturing moisture and stuff. Capturing moisture, time, everything. And I literally, I went to a gun show last year and – found me a, a, a model 28-2 highway patrolman perfect condition fucking bloom was amazing i mean to the point where i thought it was re-blue and i asked the guy i'm like hey can you take the grips off and he's like no i ain't doing that i'm like well then i ain't fucking interested well you can take the grips off after you buy it Fuck you, dude. I ain't take I ain't fucking buying that shit until you take the grips off. He knew that there was something wrong under those grips. You gotta be careful when it comes to buying old guns. If you don't know, ask someone that probably does. Um, I don't know at all. Never claim to, never will. But when it comes to old guns and old revolvers and stuff like that, trust me. I have a good basis. I've done this for a long time. And one of the biggest things is take the fucking grips off. If they refuse to take the grips off, walk the fuck away. Now, now if you were going to replace the grips, I had a question out here. What grips would you go with aftermarket-wise? So replacing grips, like, all right, so for example, with this guy here, um, I'm lucky enough I have someone I know that can get me original grips to that era uh, for a decent price. Uh, it's just time in the business, uh, meeting people, knowing people. Um, but honestly, just look at your pawn shops. Look at Gun Broker. Um, you'll find them. Now, be now are you seeing – are you saying that every grip is fitted for that particular gun? Like if I had the same exact gun, but this one bluing was all jacked up, but the grips were really good and I swapped it over, same model, everything, they would they wouldn't fit perfect like like you're saying with the right? They they would not fit perfectly, correct. Okay. Every grip. So back in the day when Smith actually started this, these were hand done. They were hand fitted. So if you get if you buy anything afterwards and try to fit it, you're gonna have an issue somewhere along the line. Hence why I have a slight issue right here where I have a space on this side. Because they're not meant for this particular gun. They're meant for an end frame, but they're not meant for that gun. Okay, let, let me change gears real quick and then I'm gonna ask a question and then get back to SoCal and his is a stainless one but um we got alaskan ballistics out there and he's asking about the, not so much asking he's saying that the ruger um say you're in bear country and it but the ruger has the option of being the plus p plus so now do your colts and winchester or smith and wesson's not have that ability because they're just not made well enough like the ruger i can put a plus p plus through this without even fucking blinking so alaskan ballistic chuck i know you love your rigor dude but trust me plus p plus will go through this without even blanking an inch all right yeah that was a that was a good question the um and then SoCal, what'd you end up with the stainless? Did it did the trigger was it lighter on the stainless version? 
So there's something interesting about San Lucille, apparently, uh, because it's silly. harder. Um, <laughs> okay, so this is the secret to Scotty's fucking shit. Apparently, none of us knew it, but um, yeah, this trigger is butter. The single action is less than butter. It's like melted butter. So here I'm going to do. Okay, hold, so, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me stop. No, no, I, I, just shut up there, bald man. <laughs> I'm trying to give you props here. Just write it out, okay? Just, just shut your pile. Just write it out. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do a double action spring test or a trigger test on the uh, this stainless steel uh, model 66. Yeah, um, it is clear just for safety Sally's fucking sake. See, um, so we'll do a, a, a double action pull on it. We'll do a couple. Oh, fuck. Come on. Wake up, motherfucker. <laughs> Chain wreck. Wakey, wakey, rise and shine. Six pounds, eight ounces. Do wow, that. that's light. Yeah. Six pounds, eight ounces. Very consistent. One more time. Six pounds, 11 ounces. So Damn. this is where it gets scary. Double action pull, reset. Ooh, that's light. I can tell. One pound, thirteen ounces. <laughs> Shit. <clears throat> hold on, hold on, hold on. One second. Hold on, one second. I rest my case. <laughs> we'll do one more. One pound, seven point two ounces. <laughs> Damn, that's lighter than my race gun. Uh, well, fuck. Let's just do one more because this is kind of making me kind of all bubbly. Excited? Inside. Yeah. <laughs> one pound thirteen. Yeah. And part part of that is human error. Obviously, it's hard to stop pulling on that trigger gauge when you. Yeah. I, I'm I'm guessing After it's it less than that. Um, but yeah, uh, apparently there's something to this magic stainless steel that Smith and Wesson has acquired from probably aliens from like Pluto or something. It's it's it's, uh, it, it's from Uranus. I like I like how it has that look to it. The uh, the machined hammer. Yeah, and the trigger. Yeah. Now show us the grips. Does it match up perfectly? That's the. Yeah, I mean these are factory grips. Um, this is probably a nineteen seventies. My dad was huge into these revolvers when uh, I guess quote unquote he was my age. And uh, turn it sideways. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so that's what that's sort of what you're looking at best to the best as far as what their stock grips. Yeah, I mean, there's mistakes in it. I mean, these are definitely mass produced. You know, if you look at uh, like that seam right there. Yeah. No, that, 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 hold on. That, that's typical of Smith & Wesson. You're going to have that gap. And then if you look at the back of the frame where it meets the. Uh, I wonder if the that's for shrinkage of wood and stuff. Yeah, it could be. I don't know. It, it, no, that, that that gap is typical of Smith and Wesson. You're going to have that in every every gun, no matter what. It's or right even here. it's right, right here too. You you probably won't be able to pick it up in the trigger guard if you look at the way the wood is actually uneven. Yeah, I see it. But you know, so it's not like it's, it's not like these are handcrafted. These are not like made by friggin skilled craftsmen it's just a bunch of friggin monkeys in a on a you know assembly line screwing shit together probably um yeah well i don't know that's nice that's I, a nice I, I, I i'm gonna <clears throat> i'm gonna say scotsman that um i'll be the bigger man and say yeah maybe you're right maybe stainless steel smith and wessons are better than colt pythons for trigger pull. 
Now, do you guys gonna, honestly I'm, think it's the steel? I'm, I don't I'm, think it is either. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's the steel. I'm just going to say it's Smith & Wesson. Um, I'm not going to say anything against SoCal because you, you guys all know I love SoCal. He's my brother. Fucking love that guy. He's a cool-ass fucking dude. If you guys don't fucking know him, which you motherfucker should, everyone on here fucking should, check yeah, this I think out. They do. Um, hey, there's kids watching. What are you doing? Oh, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, do you, you and your potty mouth. This ain't no fucking snowflake chat. Fuck that shit. <laughs> I'm offended. I'm triggered. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna run. You almost made me spill. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm. I, I'm triggered too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you guys have any questions for these guys? Now, how many do you, uh, SoCal? Do you have a Ruger in the? In the I don't. Center? I had one. Um, what are they? What is their? They had a. Uh, a single like action, it. a single action, forty-four magnum. I can't remember what it was called, but I had one and uh, I sold it. You know, a lot of the stuff I inherited a lot of guns from my father and sold them in bulk, uh, just because there were things that I truly wasn't interested in. Most of them were like uh, World War One war relics that he had bought at auction in huge quantities, uh, just not onesie twosies, but like up for auction, 20 guns in a, in a, uh, in an auction in a single buy. And he'd buy 10 guns to get one. Uh, so like, I, remember you I, I, I sold that. a lot. I saw, I sold a lot of those things. Um, but Does Ruger make yeah. the Red Hawk. Red Hawk, that's it. Perhaps. Okay. I, I, I really don't know. Uh, I don't remember. I have some old, like, HKs and um, Lugers, Luger guns. Not Luger. What is the fucking... Ruger. No, Luger. Luger. Is it Luger? Luger. 9mm Lugers? There's some 9mm, some 635s or... 635, 675, something like that. Weird friggin' Nazi calibers. Um, <laughs> just old cool shit like that left over from World War II and some World War I stuff that I kept, like special shit, like Springfield 1903s and um, some Winchester, like old Winchester lever action rifles, like way old, like fucking. <laughs> rock old <laughs> now like if you talk about old like six shooters like the the western ones you know the single shot not single shot but single action single action the um those groups seem a lot different they seem like they come out a lot more and then down they come out a lot more and down they're a lot thinner they're not as wide they're not as thick there's they're, they're a big difference now, what's the pluses or minuses, and like, is it just grip feel, or is it less recoil on the newer versions because it's tighter? Well, I mean, for me, I, I prefer having a, a thicker grip. That's why I go with the old Smiths. I go with revolvers. I go with Berettas because they have that larger, thicker grip. Um, I got decent sized hands, long fingers, so the bigger, thicker, wider grip works well for me. Uh, Ruger, not so much because it's a little bit on the thinner side and it kind of varies in how their grips are. Um, they make a quality gun, don't get me wrong. I love their guns. They make a quality gun, they just don't fit my hand well. Okay, I was kind of looking at the, like the judge. I was looking at the one. What is it 45 long colt and then the 410 right yeah it does 45 long colt 45 acp and 410 now that that'd be a good bear gun to have right and a good snake gun and a good oh yeah absolutely and the grip on that's not bad um it, again it doesn't fit me well it's a little too thin for me um there you go. It's, look at that it's, a good, it's a good gun though all right, this is for Al, Big Al. 
he uh, he asked a question a little bit ago. Uh, show us, okay, enough with the good guns. Show us something that you're embarrassed to admit you own. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> that is this is a, a, a llama 38 Super. Just the biggest piece That's of shit. That's a 38 Super? <laughs> <laughs> this thing is the gaudiest, most ugly pipe, just junk you've ever seen in your entire life. But it's a 1911 kind of style, 38 Super. Uh, that, is is California, that, that is no. California fucking written all over it. No, dude, this. That's pretty uh, badass. Uh, Fuck. I'm losing you guys. Well, you ain't losing me. You're losing SoCal. Oh, is it him? Okay, I thought I was locking up. No, SoCal's locking up. I'm good. Can you see me? Uh, you were locked up. Oh, fuck. Maybe too much chattering. But, um, see yeah, this, Show that I can it one more time. Look at this with the, the plastic pearlized grips. That's sexy as fuck. Hell yeah, that thing's badass. That's a Mexican Mafia gun, that Big Al saying. That's what I was going to tell you. Isn't that just gorgeous? Now, if complete, they had a little gold in it. Complete with a little little thing so you can hang it on your gold chain. <laughs> <laughs> that's for your necklace. Yeah. I was going to say, that, that's tactical right here, dude. That's, it's fucking tactical. <laughs> right that's why the new block. Nice Whenever you fucking need it, you just go, bam, motherfucker. Oh, even it's even got That's some badass sexy shit. as fuck, dude. Right there, it says Odile right in the front. <laughs> it says, "What's up?" This it says, says "Make so that, my that, that, fucking that, day." This is my uh, fuck. I will never admit I own this gun. <laughs> I guess I just did, didn't I? <laughs> shit, you could have borrowed it from us. A... You so, could. Game or game. you could have just got you a Smith and Washington and call it good. I said, "Fuck you." The thing about the Colt, though, I keep the Colt in a silicone injected sock. It's a sack. Because there's another one just like it, and they match. And c together, did you just say you injected your Colt? Yep, deep injection. <laughs> See, that was a 22 when he started. Now it's a 44 mug. <laughs> he drilled deep, it. Deep, the deep Colt injection. All right. Besides muzzle velocity and, and recoil, what's the difference of having a six inch barrel, four inch barrel? Is there like, like the perfect balance? Like, <sighs> All right, so it's the same as any other gun, dude. The bigger, the heavier it is, the less recoil. Yeah, I mean, that's, no, that's besides the recoil less, and the less recoil. Um, I mean, hell, this guy right here, probably the most accurate forty-four I've ever shot in my life. Yeah, but you uh, suck at shooting. I gotta say. So if that's your you. most accurate gun, you should have brought that to the farm because I've seen your videos. All right, with that being said, fuck you. Shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> this is a badass fucking accurate revolver. Um, with that being said, on average, on a day-to-day, -day, I carry the, the four-inch 357, and I also carry the uh, – hold on. I'm getting there. <coughs> the four-inch 44. And both of them are very accurate, very sweet shooting guns. Um, the difference between a four inch and a six inch isn't that much, honestly. Um, the longer barrel obviously makes it a little bit sweeter shooting, a little bit nicer, uh, less bubble rise. But all in all, um, Majority of what I shoot through these is 44 special just because I don't want to beat the fuck out of my guns, um, especially this one here. 
this guy is worth like six thousand dollars so yeah i ain't fucking beating the shit out of this thing um so 44 specials mainly what i shoot out of these guns um and i carry the 44 special in my 44 mag when i'm carrying that bad boy and it, it's basically like shooting the 45 acp so it's it's not bad at all kick wise you're saying yeah kick wise it's not bad yeah i got a great answer big l said he said uh the difference is the longer barrel equals closer to the target <laughs> All right, I'm the only one that thought that was funny. That's awesome. It is definitely more concealable, the shorter one. But if it only kicks like a 45 ACP, that's pretty awesome. I was thinking that thing kicked like a mule. Only if you're shooting 44 mag. If you're shooting 44 special, it's like a 45 ACP. Now, if you're shooting 44 mag and a good heavy loaded 44 mag, yeah, you're going to fucking feel it. So say, say you were shooting a 310 grain barrel load 44 mag, you're going to know you were shooting 44. All right. Well, help me decide on this whole, uh, basically you could call it a bear gun, a snake gun. I'm talking about the judge and then there's the other one. Who makes the other one? You got the Taurus Judge and you got the Smith and Wesson Governor. The Governor, okay. So I think it's five rounds, at least the one I was looking at. But at the end of the day, how many, what can I shoot out of it? A 410? 410, 45 Long Colt, and 45 ACP. You can shoot 45 ACP out of that thing? Yep. No, if you're looking for a bear gun or a snake gun, I would go with the 410. Yeah, but it's all the same gun anyways, right? It's all the same gun. Yeah. They're both the same size. They're both the same, essentially same kind of trigger pull on the guns for the most part. Um. If it was an older Smith & Wesson, I would say buy Smith & Wesson. But they're both fairly similar nowadays. I still would recommend the Smith over the Taurus just because Taurus sucks ass. And you, got my, you got my vote there. Uh, Taurus really fucking has a lot of issues. I've sent more Taurus back for repair than I can count in the last 10 years that I've been in guns. Um so just based off my experience, buy fucking Smith & Wesson, fuck Taurus, don't fucking touch Taurus, buy Smith & Wesson. So out of all those companies, you're still thinking Ruger's good. I've heard good stuff about Ruger revolvers. Ruger, Ruger does a phenomenal job. Um, I don't own any Rugers, but they do a phenomenal job. Uh, I like their product. They have a great warranty. Uh, the customer service is excellent. Um, it's just, I'm a Smith guy. Yeah. Uh, through, through and through. And I'm not going to lie about it, but I buy old Smiths. I don't buy new Smiths. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Uh, any of these uh, old school American made uh, revolvers, the older ones are way. I can't, I can't say they're way better. They're made with a way more love. You know, the American, the, the, the American no, dream they, was, they are made better because they were made they were made by hand. They were done by hand. They, yeah, yeah, they, had, yeah. they had the time put into them versus this all this all machine and bullshit. They actually took the time, put the fucking handwork into it. So yes. I I'm okay with saying they were fucking hand done. They were fucking handmade. And yes, buy the old Smith and Wesson's, buy the old Colts. They are both great firearms. Um, How do you know if it's old? Do you have to check the serial number against the company? You got to check the serial number. Um, if you guys don't know how to do that, again, highly recommend buy the Smith and Wesson book. It'll cost you forty bucks. 
Buy the cult book. It'll cost you $100 for a cult book. Shit, you can look this stuff up online. You can find it. If you if you search, you know, cult database of serial numbers or uh, Smith & Wesson serial get, numbers. You'll, you'll get, get a you'll basis get, you know, of it. Yeah, you're not going to find out, like, yeah, you, what you day of the week it was made. But you you're, be, you'll, you'll get a year. At least a year. You won't you won't be a hundred percent accurate unless you buy the books, but you'll be damn close. So what year did they do Keith Gregory is I don't know if it's so much asking, but the internal lock, so the safety feature for the drop hammer. Like when did they go to that lever? How how far back can you go where you don't the, the internal lock and the Smiths? Yeah, they're basically the hammer safety. So the internal lock in the Smith, I believe, was 2000, fuck, 2002 or 2005. I can't remember which. Okay. Oh, they're talking about the key lock. Yeah, I have seen that. Where you can yeah, that, that's what it is. It's the key lock, and it was like 2002 or 2005. I don't remember which. No, I was talking about the hammer safety, the, the basically the, the – uh, the drop, you know, drop safety freaking thing. That would be a Ruger. Ruger Ruger have done that for years. The, so the Smith and Wesson and the Colt don't have that? No. Okay. Don't drop it. Not so with a one, one that's pound, what I'm asking. Yeah. Trigger. I'm learning. Yeah, no, the only the only one that has that, that transfer bar is Ruger. That's it. Okay. And Ruger came out with that transfer bar years ago. Well, I guess if you have it cocked, you don't want to drop it anyways, but okay, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Rose talking about it. All right. You guys got any questions or comments? For these guys, I don't have any answers. I'm learning hey, a lot. Though. Kitty, you got the cat. Cat, come on, kitty. He's shy. <laughs> ask oh, hey, him to ask because I'm, I'm going to be out of here in a few minutes, guys. I got to go to back in bed. I got to get up in the morning. So yeah, if you got we questions on Smith and Wesson, you we got questions get up, on Colt, ask him. Get I get fucking know. That's it. Ask it. Got to go to sleep mode. You know what? It's good. We should probably uh, wrap this up. How long has it been? An hour? Yeah. Almost. I don't know. Almost an hour. All right. So if you're not familiar with WTF SoCal, go check out his awesome collection of freaking badass shit. That's the guy <laughs> with the space, space mic. He's talking yeah. to him. This is so I can uh, <laughs> talk to people over the internet. <laughs> That's right. This is how I talk to people. <laughs> All right. And then we have the crazy Scotsman, the man that carries a freaking bazooka to work every day. Fuck yeah, buddy. You know it. I love carrying a fucking 44 every day to work. It's fucking awesome. Freedom on, bitches. Freedom fucking on. You need, you uh, need to change your couple, YouTube channel to fucking Dirty Harry. <laughs> that's right. So what brand holsters do you guys have? And then uh, don't doesn't uh, the judge and governor require moon clips for the 45 ACP? I don't carry them, so I don't know um, what holsters work. No, no, they do not. Um, my 44 mag carry holster... Uh, courtesy of Winthrop Holsters, and they custom made this for me in less than an hour. Wow! And I'm looking at carrying these in the uh, the gun shop that I run, and the guy was like, "Bring a gun with you," and I'm like, "Can I bring a revolver?" And he's like, "Sure." And I'm like, "Are you sure?" Because no one makes this holster for this gun. And he's like, "Yeah, bring it." All right, so I showed up with a fucking 44 mag. And uh, a couple hours later, I walked out with this bad boy right here. And uh, 
pretty happy. It's highly polished. And I will be doing a review on this here pretty soon, but uh, this is my daily carry gun. and All right. Love, and then, me, love me some 44, baby. And uh, are, are you sure you can shoot 45 ACP out of the judge? Yes. 100%. 45 long call, 410, and 45 ACP. All right. Same thing with the judge and with the the, the uh, Taurus judge and the Smith & Wesson governor. Awesome. All right. So that's it. Any other what about questions? The, I, I got a question. What about the, um, the Kiltec Millennial? <laughs> We're done here. Fuck that shit. <laughs> Fuck, the, fuck this, fuck that, <laughs> fuck this little flick bullshit, we're done. All right, why don't you guys... Uh, that would be the awesomest name for a fucking snowflake gun, the millennial. <laughs> the millennial. <laughs> it takes moon clay. Here, here, SoCal. I got your millennial right here. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> All right, a well. half pawn trigger. Half if that, if that. <laughs> all right, say no, goodnight, it's, crazy it's, Scotsman, and then uh, we'll move on to WTF SoCal. Peace. All right, that, that was the longest outro I've ever seen out of the Scotsman. So you guys should be pretty excited. Cheers, WTF. fuckers. There you go. Cheers. You still haven't even finished your beer. It's been an hour. You said. All right, WTF SoCal. He's going to blow smoke at you, I think. Probably. Keep blowing the smoke. W what? Say it in outro. <laughs> outro. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> there you night. go. That was good. See you. <laughs> Thank you guys Whatever. for showing up. Um, I learned a lot tonight about revolvers. I'm not a revolver kind of guy, but I learned a lot, so I appreciate you guys and uh, all you guys in the external commenting and helping uh, come up with questions definitely appreciate it and of course robin jones as well so see you guys on the next video and uh glad we got to have some fun tonight so see you guys take care take stay care, safe check your smoke detectors and fire extinguishers and uh, <laughs> and, uh carry on don't bend over for the soap and carry on and don't yes all right that all.